Caitlin Clark. You know, right now, Caitlin Clark is on top of the world. She is the biggest star in college basketball. And when I say she's the biggest star in college basketball, I'm not just talking about women's college basketball. Caitlin Clark is the biggest star in all of college basketball. Hell, she is the biggest star in the WNBA, and she hasn't even entered the dump yet. Most people could not name a single player in men's college basketball. Those same people, they don't even realize that the WNBA still exists. Caitlin Clark is a phenomenal basketball player. She's humble. She seems to have good character, stays out of trouble off the court. Someone like me who has never really been able to get into women's basketball, I will watch Caitlin Clark play. Now, that doesn't mean that she's appointment television to me. That doesn't mean I'm checking the schedule every day so I don't miss an Iowa game. But if I am scrolling through my guide looking for something to watch and I see that Caitlin Clark is on TV, I'll check it out for a few minutes. Whereas in the past, if I saw women's college basketball on television, I looked for anything else to watch. Hen seducing the cock on the Discovery Channel, if it's between that and women's college basketball, I'm watching that hen try to get laid. Caitlin Clark is a great story. She's at the peak of her career. The problem for Caitlin Clark, this is as good as it's going to get, and I think she knows it. I actually feel sorry for Caitlin Clark. Hell, I feel sorry for all the young women playing basketball at the professional level in college. Their basketball careers peak early. They reach the highest level of success at 19, 20, 21 years old. They've got a four, maybe five year window to make real money to enjoy the spotlight of the mainstream before they are forced to enter the place where basketball careers go to die. The dump. Last month, the WNBA had their draft lottery. Did you guys even know about it? Every June when the NBA has their draft lottery, it's major news throughout the media. When the dump has their lottery, most people think dump divers are buying actual lottery tickets hoping to escape these putrid living conditions. Something called the Indiana Fever won the draft lottery in the dump, securing the rights to the number one pick in the draft. Now, there were two things that were guaranteed on that fateful night in December. Obviously, the first guarantee was the Fever receiving the first pick in the draft. But the second the second thing that the lottery guaranteed was Caitlin Clark returning to Iowa to play her final season of professional basketball. If she was hesitant before the lottery, which she was, the fever securing the number one pick in the draft, that erased all the hesitancy. This made Caitlin Clark's decision simple. Right now, she is playing in front of sold out arenas. 12, 15, 20,000 people, they are paying over $200 a ticket to watch Caitlin Clark. Now, why in the hell would she go from that to playing in front of dozens of people and empty seats? Last year, the Indiana Fever, they barely averaged 4,000 a game. They ranked dead last in the WNBA, a league that struggles to draw crowds. Well, KC, that's simply not true. The Atlanta Dreamers ranked dead last in attendance in the dump. Yeah, I know, but I don't count the Atlanta Dreamers because they play in a high school gym. And that's not hyperbole. The Dreamers literally play in a gym that's smaller than most major high schools. The dump in Indiana filled their arena to 24% capacity last year. It is so quiet, you can actually hear people snoring. During one game last season, the arena was so quiet, you could literally hear the drool hitting the floor. Maintenance thought there was a leak, but everything was all good. It was just your typical WNBA fan sleeping through the game and drooling on the floor. Again... Why would Caitlin Clark go from the pinnacle to the dump? When she does enter the WNBA, whether she willingly chooses to enter later this year or she is forced to enter next year, whenever Caitlin Clark enters the WNBA, she is entering with the added pressure of saving the league. She's going to be the biggest star to enter the WNBA in the past three decades. Actually, Caitlin Clark... She will be the only star to enter the WNBA in the last three decades. Last month, she was interviewed by Coach K, who has a show on Sirius XM. He asked her the obvious question. Are you choosing to leave professional basketball to become a minimum wage trash collector? Listen to her answer. You can either leave and go to the WNBA draft or stay here another year and 
it's a hard decision because in my eyes, it's like a win-win. I can go and kind of right. live out a lifelong dream or I can stay here and, you know, kind of be in college, start working on my master's or start working on, you know, another degree and still play college basketball with some of my best friends. Obviously, Caitlin Clark can't give a direct answer here. And I am reading between the lines, but I feel like Caitlin Clark answered the question without directly answering the question. After seeing this, obvious to me, Caitlin Clark is staying at the professional level. She is not leaving Iowa until the NCAA forces her to leave. I mean, how often do you see a top draft pick talk about staying in college to receive their master's degree? When Zion Williamson was at Duke and he was asked during the season about declaring for the NBA draft, did you hear him say, you know, it's a real tough decision. I can stay at Duke and obtain my associate's degree in potent potables, or I can enter the NBA draft and make millions of dollars. The decision for Zion Williamson was easy. You don't stay in college and risk injury. You don't stay in college and make six figures to play basketball when you can go to the NBA and make hundreds of millions of dollars to play basketball. But with Caitlin Clark, her choices are completely different. She can stay in college and continue to be the biggest star in college basketball, or she can apply to be a dump diver and risk being forgotten. Now, the mainstream media, they believe that Caitlin Clark can save the WNBA. The handful of people who actually watch the WNBA, they believe Caitlin Clark is going to be their savior. This is our great white hope. This is our savior. The WNBA will finally be mainstream. Our league will finally be taken seriously. Yeah, uh, that's great in theory. I know it sounds good, but I seriously doubt that Caitlin Clark is going to save the WNBA. Now, for her sake, I hope she does. I wish Caitlin Clark nothing but success, but seriously, these expectations from the media and the dozen or so WNBA fans, these expectations they are asking of Caitlin Clark, they're asking her to do the impossible. There is no denying the fact that Caitlin Clark is a big draw in women's college basketball. Every Iowa game is sold out, whether they're playing at home or they're playing on the road. Like I said earlier, Average ticket price to see Caitlin Clark over $200. Average ticket price in the WNBA? Free. I mean, they can't give tickets away. The problem for Caitlin Clark, she's not drawing on television. There has never been more hype surrounding a female player in college basketball. Every day, there are countless articles about Caitlin Clark. Clips of her highlights go viral on social media. She's heavily featured on SportsCenter. But her nationally televised games... So far, they're just not drawing good numbers. Last Friday, Iowa Rutgers was in primetime on the Big Ten Network, 315,000 viewers. December 30th, Iowa, Minnesota, 229,000 viewers. Well, KC, that's not fair. Those games were on the Big Ten Network. Oh, really? I wasn't hearing that complaint when volleyball was drawing huge numbers on the same network. If Caitlin Clark is drawing ratings on television, how come she's not being heavily featured on ESPN? Most of her games are on the Big Ten Network. Now, last night, her game against, I think it was Indiana, was broadcast on Fox. But other than that, I couldn't find another game this season that was broadcast on ESPN, ESPN2, CBS, Fox, FS1. Now, to be fair, big conference games don't start until January, but that didn't stop the networks from broadcasting other women's games. Look, I am not pointing this out to shit on Caitlin Clark. I've got nothing but respect for her. I'm pointing this out to show you these unfair expectations that Caitlin Clark is going to save the WNBA. Those expectations are unrealistic. But KC, she was a huge draw in March Madness. Caitlin Clark set record ratings in the Final Four and Championship game. Uh, first of all, let me correct you there. It's called the Women's Tournament. It's not March Madness. I know the media likes to pretend it's March Madness in the name of equity, but March Madness, that is the tournament that features players who can grow beards naturally. Yes, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, they drew record ratings last spring. Yes, they were a part of the reason that the tournament was a big success. But like I told you guys last year, the tournament was the real draw. 
Do we give credit to individual players on the men's side when they draw massive ratings every year? When Duke pops a big number during March Madness, do we credit individual players? Can anyone name a single player from Duke last season? Can you name a player at Duke this season? When the men draw ratings, everyone credits the tournament for being the draw. It's the truth, too, and it's the same in women's college basketball. Last year, the tournament was the draw. When Zion Williamson was at Duke, he was drawing millions of viewers during the regular season. Zion Williamson was the last major star in college basketball. Who was the biggest star in college basketball before Zion? I don't remember. I mean, you would probably have to go back, what, 10, maybe 15 years? Maybe, maybe you could say Steph Curry? Zion was pulling big numbers during the regular season. His debut in the NBA popped a big rating for ESPN. The truth is, Caitlin Clark so far has not been drawing during the regular season, at least not on television where it actually matters. Maybe she drew decent ratings last night on Fox. I don't know. The ratings haven't been released yet. And there's not a doubt in my mind that Caitlin Clark will draw during the tournament again, but Again, the main draw is the tournament itself. The point is, this expectation that Caitlin Clark is going to save the WNBA, it's unrealistic. The media is expecting this poor young woman to do something that no one has been able to accomplish in the past 30 years. And maybe she'll prove me wrong. Maybe Caitlin Clark will make the WNBA mainstream and relevant. I hope she does. If Caitlin Clark actually saves the WNBA, I'll be the first one to admit I was wrong. I'm not like Mike Freeman at USA Today. I've got no problem admitting when I'm wrong about something, and I'm a man of my word. But I don't think I'm wrong here. There's a reason that Caitlin Clark is hesitant to join the WNBA. There's a reason Angel Reese is hesitant to join the WNBA. Both of these young women, they're making big money in college. And they're making big money because the platform is larger. Their platform shrinks exponentially once they enter the WNBA. All right, just to give you guys a heads up, it's going to be the only video for today. I want to watch the NFL playoffs this afternoon, so we'll be back to our regular schedule tomorrow. But in the meantime, give me your thoughts on this. Caitlin Clark, phenomenal basketball player, seems to be a phenomenal young woman. She's a major star right now, but will that star power translate to the WNBA? Can Caitlin Clark save the dump? You tell me. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.